So I was last um, just discussing these uh, confessional identities. And um, there's just something that I'd like to make uh, clear on this as well. Um, in a certain sense, there is a kind of myth generated about all of this, um, especially in the Protestant world. And this is not a criticism of Protestantism by any means, but um, I do think there's some important things to mention as, a, as uh, you know, teaching a history class and where I see a certain misperception about what's going on because it, it it essentially looks like um you have someone like martin luther who's saying oh i just want to believe in the bible and i'm looking at the church and the church doesn't do what's in the bible and we have calvin kind of doing the same kind of thing and so that, that what's happening is a debate about who is more biblically correct than the other uh, Christian uh, at the time. There's some truth to that, but um, there is a, a, a problem to that oversimplification. And this is what I, uh, I mean. First of all, it's not really until around this time that we even really establish the Bible as it is in the Western tradition. Now you you might be a little bit confused about what I'm saying or or think is that is that right? What do you mean? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, a book, uh, uh, the, da Vin the, the Da Vinci Code, which is a popular book, um, misrepresents history and portrays Constantine, Emperor Constantine, in the fourth century as the one who decides which books would become the Bible, for example. And that's not the case. It really doesn't get established fully until around this time period, this late in history. Um, and, and so, uh, just so by example, um, to, to this day, Roman Catholics have a Bible that has different books in the Old Testament than what Protestant Christians have. The Protestant Christians have an Old Testament that is the exact same books that Jews have, except that Jews put it in a different order. So Jews have a, a different arrangement of the, the same books that the Protestants have. And the Roman Catholic Church has books like Tobit, um, some even chapters in the book of Daniel that are not in uh, a Protestant Bible, and these are called Apocrypha. What's interesting is at the time, the Apocryphal works, as they are known, these, these other uh, works that um, the Protestants no longer have, Luther looked at those books and he said, I don't quite think that these really would count as inspired. So he moved them into a different section in his Bible, basically saying, eh, I'm questioning this. Now, this is a very different type of approach to um, a biblical debate. Nowadays, I can't think of any Christian debate that could take place in which a theologian could start questioning what, uh, uh, if, if a Bible book is acceptable or not because it doesn't fit with what he thinks or she thinks to be uh, in harmony with the other books. But in fact, that's what he does. And he even questions the validity of the book of Revelation, which, by the way, the Assyrian church uh, has never accepted in, in, the, in the East. Um, he doubted uh, Jude, and he had a problem with James, because because James, for one, made, made it sound like that you'd have, that, that works you could be saved by works. It's, it, it, it had this emphasis on works that Paul seems to be de-emphasizing. And so uh, uh, he had some questions about that. So the, the Bible as it was at the time was set up in a way that, that um, Christians were actually even debating about what is the Bible. Um, they didn't disagree, let's say, about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or the overall art ideas of, of, the, of um, the fundamentals but there was that debate and 
the Catholics finally at the Council of Trent said, look, the Bible that we have, this is it. No more questions. This, this is done. Like, this is what we have. And what the Catholics do do is this, though, which is different than the Protestants. They say there's not a contradiction between the church or the Bible, okay? Because God inspired the church. So if God's inspired the church, then it is that what you're seeing, it has to harmonize with the Bible. And if you see, and I'm going to paraphrase this, if you're seeing a contradiction, it's merely because you are not understanding the fullness of God and the way he's operated through the church in light of the scripture. So um, in, in a certain sense, it's kind of like, uh, I think, fair to say that just as all Christians believe that the Old Testament is holy, um, they believe that the New Testament clarifies things, even if the New Testament let's say, contradicts or goes against ideas that are in the Old Testament. For Jews, this is like uh, an obvious reason why they, they, they wouldn't become a Christian. If they're a religious Jew, they say, you have things in here, you know, uh, um, you know Paul saying that uh, uh, the, the, the law is nailed at the cross with Christ and, and um, no longer necessary to do circumcision, which is so fundamental. And so Christians say, no, this is this is uh, the development of revelation so for the catholic church i think it's fair to say that they have always seen or especially by this time to clarify that the bible is one form of revelation and then the church then inspired of god gives another one now this is not going to set right for um people who would prefer something to be more strictly by the bible and so there's that whole debate about uh, uh, human beings uh, um, versus the texts which are seen to be inspired of God. And so what it really comes down to is this. Human de beings are producing all of them. But for the religious at the time who are debating, the debate is what is man-made, what is human-made uh, doctrine versus God-inspired doctrine. Okay? And um, that's really what's happening. And for Protestants, it's eventually going to be solidified that the Bible is the ultimate authority. You're going to see that as a mainstream. Evangelical Christianity now, that's the main thing. If it's not in the Word, you don't, you don't do anything. You, you know, you got to go straight to the source. Um, but again, that's not necessarily what was going on back then, even by the Protestants. And so, um, and we don't really have... A strong knowledge of first century Christianity. So the idea um, that some of the Protestants have, they wanted to think about being a, 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 how Christians were before the church was established and made this huge political entity. Um, there's not a lot to go on but to presume that the texts that they're reading reflect the way that first century Christians would have thought or acted. Okay, And I just thought I'd bring this out to kind of give you a little bit of a background on some of the the way of thinking and the debates take place here because they do come into modern politics uh, even now not as much in America um, you know uh, uh, part of the whole idea of separating church and state was because Europe was killing each other uh, over these d debates and they started to do it here in the United States as well and uh, one of the uh, bright sides of the founding fathers uh, um, was them finding ways to make sure that Americans didn't kill and incarcerate each other over religious debates. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, we, there was even a lot of anti-Catholicism here uh, uh, as well. And for some time, I mean, you may or may not know this, that JFK, uh, Kennedy, there was a big deal to a lot of people that he was Catholic and he was our first non-Protestant president. And this all comes out of this European divide and, and, and set of issues that is really going back to this time period that we're talking about. So I kind of want to really put it in perspective to you that what you're studying here has relevance even in the modern world and that when you look at, let's say, um, the Islamic world uh, that's fighting each other over debates right now over Shiites and Sunnis, which I will always bring up from time to time, we shouldn't forget that Christians have had this same 
problematic legacy of fighting uh, each other um, over ideas of religion, sometimes more violently than fighting somebody of another religion, okay? And uh, all religions, uh, not all, um, Islam and Christianity have that, I think, in their strongest legacy. That's just a fact, and that's not a critique of either religion. It's just something that I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out. Um, but in any case, uh, um, I hope that, that kind of adds a little bit of clarity to uh, this um, section. And, you know, um, it, it's a sad thing to think, right, about um, a peaceful ideology that you see with Jesus and, and, and people actually like burning uh, human beings at the stake based on their assumed false assumption of, 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 uh, of that interpretation, okay? So I'm going to end there and we're going to move on to the family at the time.